Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah. I am happy to be with you, as always. Love joining you every week for author interviews to talk about books. And I hope you had a good weekend. Um, I was social this weekend, which is always a minor miracle when I'm social without my husband, because I'm pretty introverted. And... um, I haven't quite managed it once a week since he's been gone, because it'll be four weeks tomorrow uh, since he left. Not left. He's coming back. (laughs) He's he's helping his parents. Um, And I've been social three times. So that, for me, that is not bad. That is not bad. So I will take it. Anyway, hung out with some friends of ours who are from London. They're actually the ones that we went to visit in London a couple months ago. And they're here now. So hung out with them, which was great. And um, yeah. So had a good weekend, got some stuff done around the house, hung out with the puppies, of course. I've been re-watching Doctor Who, which also I have not done without my, with, with I did it the first time with my husband. Um, now I'm watching it by myself. And it's hard to watch by myself because there's so many comments I want to make and the dogs don't care. Um, but they're having to put up with me making random Doctor Who comments. So just started season two, season two of the new Doctors. I think of them as old doctors and new doctors and maybe everyone does but that's how I think of them and so season one is 2005 it's I don't know what season it is but it's like the 10th doctor or something um so anyway I've watched the old doctors as well I I have various degrees of love and appreciation for all of them um and my husband and I are always talking about which ones we like best but anyway not the point we are here to talk about a book, uh, a couple of books, actually, because it is a returning author. Kevin Moore joined me um, on episode 332 of the podcast. So if you want to listen to that episode, it is about the first book in this series, which we talk about as well during this um, interview. Um, he joined me back then to talk about his book, The Book of Souls. And now today we are talking about the sequel to that book, which is called The Book of Demons. And uh, here's the description of that book. When Mr. Phillips discovers a powerful, cursed painting whose magic he can use for personal gain, he will stop at nothing to acquire it, including murder. But someone else finds it first. Jack, a teenage mystic who understands the painting's tremendous power and would do anything to keep Mr. Phillips from harnessing it. Along with two unexpected allies, a non-verbal autistic child and the spirit of a dead nun, Jack battles to keep the painting away from Mr. Phillips. But as the stakes rise along with the body count, their epic battle for possession of the painting may cost Jack everything and everyone he loves. So that is the description of The Book of Demons. Again, it is by Kevin Moore, and this is the second in this series. The first one was called The Book of Souls, and in The Book of Souls, we really learn Jack's story and how he becomes a mystic. Um, There's a lot of information in The Book of Souls, but now in this book, we are focusing on Mr. Phillips, who is a minor secondary character in the first book, and Mr. Phillips is creepy as heck, let me tell you. This is a great book for this time of year, spooky season, as we, uh, you know, people like to call it. This is it's, we talk about this a little bit, Kevin and I talk about this a little bit, that it is listed as horror, and it does have some of those elements, but it's also paranormal, it's psychological, it is supernatural, it is creepy, um, but it doesn't go deep into the gore, horror, you'll be able to sleep. I'm, I'm a wimp, you've, you know this about me, you, if you've listened to the podcast, you know that I don't do well with horror and I can read these (laughs) and and enjoy them so um definitely if you're a fan of horror then I I think you'll still enjoy it um but if you are a fan of psychological supernatural creepy all those great um 
shivery books um, this time of the, for this time of year, then this is something that you should definitely check out. And um, can you read the second one without reading the first one? Probably, but I would suggest reading them both because you really do get... Um, Jack's story is alluded, alluded to and mentioned in the second one, of course, but you, you get a much fuller picture of Jack's story and what he went through in order to get to this point where now he's battling Mr. Phillips. So let's go ahead and listen to the um, interview with Kevin Moore. Again, the book is called The Book of Demons. The author is Kevin Moore. Hi, Kevin. Welcome back to the podcast. Thank you. It's nice to be here. I had fun the last time I was with you. I had fun as well, and I'm happy to have you back. We are going to talk about the sequel to the book we talked about the first time. This one's called The Book of Demons. But before we do that, um, if you could share a little bit about yourself for people who maybe didn't hear the first uh, episode or need a little refresher as to who you are. Okay. So um, my name is Kevin Moore, and um, I have several books out. Um One of them is called Christmas Stories, Seven Original Short Stories. Um, And then I did uh, The Book of Souls, which was based on a true um, happening in my life where, unfortunately, my son, I'm a lucid dreamer. So and basically that to me, what it means is simply that when I'm dreaming, I'm aware that I'm in a dream. And I had these uh, repeated dreams Um, like maybe three or four of the dreams and they were these shadow figures and they were trying to get my son Matthew and this was about eight or nine years ago and so they were you know they were trying to get him in my dream and they it was very haunting for me and I but I felt like it was an alarm too at the same time well within a month of those dreams he ended up in intensive care and while we were there in the hospital apparently we were staying in a room that had a ghost. Um, and it was out of the three weeks we were in that hospital, it was the night, the two nights we were in that particular room, we had the best sleep that we had because most of the time we weren't sleeping because he had, you know, he had a lung collapse and he had a trach and, you know, there was wires all over the place, but he was insisting that I sleep in the bed with him. So it was very, neither one of us slept well, but in that night, in those two nights, we slept very well. And the nurse who turned out to be, I put her in the book of the book of souls, Lulu said to me when they finally, they moved us out of the room for some reason. And she goes, you should be happy that you're out of this room. And I said, why? And she goes, because that room is haunted. There's a ghost in that room and and it's not a friendly ghost. And I was like, I'm going to disagree with you there. I think it's a very friendly ghost. So that inspired me to write the book of souls, which has a ghost in it, only he's not a friendly ghost. Um, But it was based on that true story of the shadows and they are in the book of souls. Um, I'm also, uh, I was a yoga teacher. Uh, I'm a Reiki practitioner and um, I'm a father and um, I'm just you know, I've really started to write books within the last few years. Yeah, thank you. Um, and so you you shared a little bit about the Book of Souls, but since it is the first book and then leads into the Book of Demons, um, do you want to say anything more about the premise of the Book of Souls? Yes. So the, the Book of Souls basically starts out with a 40-something-year-old man with, you know, a wife that he loves dearly and three kids, and they seem, you know, very happy in their life. Um, and then uh, a, a bird gets in the house, and they're told that it's an omen, sort of like my shadow people were for me, like that it was to something else coming. And what happens is through uh, a couple of events, he ends up wake his son gets sick but then he ends up waking up as his 13 year old self in new york in the 70s from a coma and he finds out that he fell through the floor in an abandoned boarding house and he's has he's had this whole life and the neurologist and all these doctors and the psychiatrist are telling him that it's a false memory that those uh that that never happened but so that's the story starts with that where he's balancing that because he has a whole repertoire of 
how we met Catherine, his kids, their birthdays, their lives. So that's part of the thing that needs to be solved is, did that really happen or is it a false memory? And in the meantime, once he wakes up from the coma, he realizes he can hear dead people, he can talk to dead people, and that there's a ghost in an apartment across the street that watches him in his school every day. And that's sort of where it takes off. And so he just decides, you know, he becomes aware of his, um, these abilities. And he's also trying to manage between, is this real and is it, or is this not real? Yes, and it gets very creepy at points. It's um, it's it's paranormal. It's supernatural. It's a little bit horror. But um, I think we talked a little bit about this the last time. Thankfully, I am a, not a terribly brave person when it comes to reading horror, and it, it's definitely high on the creep factor, but not on the like you'll never sleep again factor. So right. yeah, that. because there's so, I I I felt like it was a spiritual book when I was writing it because it's it's mm -hmm. about those things that we question in our own lives. It, you know, it's like you know, do am I remembering this correctly? Is this you know, it's so it's a spiritual journey for Jack too because he's he's always been a fearful kid and now all of a sudden he's waking up from a coma and not only is he because he's lost his mother very young so that he's he's waking up and he's going all right there's demons, there's shadow creatures, and there's a ghost. How how am I going to handle this? And he's also afraid of everybody thinking he's crazy if he tells them what he's really seeing. So there's a lot going on there in that book. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so then that leads into the book of demons, which is, um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll let you give an overview of that one. Okay, so the book of demons basically continues the story of Jack Kelly, who is now uh, this 15 year old boy, 14 year old boy at the end of he's getting ready to start high school. And there's still the painting, which shows up in the first book, which is what haunts the ghost. Um, and it's basically a book. So in the in the book of souls, there's a character called Casper Greenstreet, and he's the ghost. And he had seen Jack when he was alive at Madison Square Park as a little boy playing marbles, and he sketches him. So when he become, starts to become you know, a prominent artist, he takes that picture that is really Jack and makes the painting what he calls a self-portrait, and he puts these shadows in this portrait, and, the and he paints with his own blood. So it makes the uh, paintings mystical and the shadows are very powerful. And, but that's what connects him and Jack is that painting. So now Casper is not in the second book. He's for, for people who haven't read the book of souls, I don't want to like blow it for them, but he's right, not right. in the second book for, a, you know, a variety of reasons because that book settles that, that story line with him and Casper. Um, but there's this man, Mr. Phillips, who is a shapeshifter. And uh, he's a, you know, a necromancer, and he lives in the in-between. He's sort of like of the living, but also of the dead. Um, and then he wants the painting because there's the shadows that he can use and manipulate, something Casper could not do. Um, so now it's the battle between good and evil where... Um, Mr. Phillips wants this painting at, and he'll kill to get it. And Jack has possession of the painting with Peter Cairo, who was the uh, man in 3C who was being haunted. And they have possession of the painting. So it's like the battle between them two um, to try and keep Mr. Phillips from getting this painting. And it's, mm -hmm. it's very interesting because it starts like in the uh, 1930s and gives you the background for Mr. Phillips on how he becomes a shapeshifter. Mm -hmm. And I, and that's kind of fun and interesting. And, um, and it's also, you know, the, the, the arc for Jack is now after the book of souls, like what he's now he's learned what his gifts are, where they're the, the strengths, what he can do, what he can't do. He's sort of outmatched by Mr. Phillips because Mr. Phillips is, you know, wicked and, uh, 
you know, he is a shapeshifter, among other things. Um, so it's, it becomes the battle between Jack and uh, Phillips. And so far, I'm getting really, really good reviews. And people love the story because it's like complete mayhem from the beginning to the end. You know, it's not because I'm not world building anymore because it's I've already done that in the Book of Souls. So now it's a matter of, you know, finding, you know, these two sort of at war with each other. And um, I think it's fun. Mm -hmm. I think it's a lot more fun. Okay, let's go ahead and take our first break of the podcast. When we come back, uh, Kevin will be talking more about Mr. Phillips going from um, kind of a secondary character in the first book to the big bad in this one. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I am speaking today with author Kevin Moore about the second book in a series. The first was called The Book of Souls. This one is called The Book of Demons. Let's go ahead and return to the interview. So Mr. Phillips was a, a relatively minor character in the first book. Did you always plan on expanding his story or did he just kind of stick with you as a character? Well, he stuck with me as a character. And the, the interesting story for me, was I originally, th this was originally one book, you know, and it was called The Book of Souls. And the I, I was working with an editor, and she was like, you do realize you have two good books here. And I was like, because I just did the whole story. Like, so the first book would have been like 500 and something pages. And she was like, you have two books here. So then we went about separating them. And, uh, and that's how they became the Book of Souls and the Book of Demons, because Phillips, in the original, original writing, had a much bigger part, but he came in later on in the story, which became the second par part of the book. It became the second book. Um, but he was just so much fun, and I knew there were so many things to go with that. And, and the fact that, you know, like you have a ghost, and you can make the ghost any way you want, which is why in the book of souls i felt like it was very important to show casper greenstreet in the beginning because he's you know he was bisexual and you know his struggles in life um and then show him as a ghost because when he was alive he felt invisible until he was able to do the paintings the duality series um and then he became super famous so when he became a ghost, he he used that concept of being invisible to his power. And he was angry because he was not always treated well in life. Um, and so what I realized right when I was writing him was there's so much you can do with the bad guy. You know what I mean? And so with Mr. Phillips, it was, it was so much fun. And to give him his backstory... Um, and how he becomes a shapeshifter, I also think that was important. Just like how did Casper become a ghost? It, you know, because sometimes like in ghost stories, you, you have a ghost, but you don't know what they were like when they were alive. And with Mr. Phillips, you know what he's, he was like when he was not a shapeshifter. And then he, how he becomes a shapeshifter and how he takes that power. And rather than use it for anything good, it, he's using it purely for self-interest and evil mm -hmm. um, so yeah no i always once i wrote him i was like there's so many things i could do with him and um i think it's fun and i did you have you read the ending of the book of demons yet yes okay so did you like it 
Um, yes, I have questions. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of fun, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Um, it, and but I will go back to Mr. Phillips and say thank you for because the way he becomes a shapeshifter, and I'm not going to give that away, but it's um it's not pleasant. But thank you for uh, not going into more detail on on the unpleasantness of that situation because I don't know that I would have. Mm. Yeah, yeah but, it's just enough yeah. to show you because you don't want to have you don't you don't want the reader to have to start off with all his power without figuring out like but, but how did he get this and so yeah I mean I, I agree with you I mean as a writer I think it's always fun to write uh, some of those things and I did a you know I was doing a lot of research on you know the caves and all of that stuff um, but to make him it was more important for me to let the reader know how he got those powers so that they could believe it when he's in, you know, 1970s, 1980s, New York city and how right. he's using it now. Right. What was your initial inspiration for, uh, so was it, uh, um, was it the shape shifting or how did you kind of decide the jumping off point for this particular book and Mr. Phillips character? Well, the jumping off part before we had the pandemic, you know, there was a, I was listening to this writer who was talking about um, the wet markets in China. Um, you've heard of them, right? The wet markets where they, you know, supposedly eat some of these animals that are like, you know, which can cause some type of, you know, Ooh, okay. environment. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I was like, okay, well, what if I find, what if I have my lead character get a virus, but he's maybe not, it doesn't make him sick per se. Like it, it almost gives him something that nobody else has. So that's how I had the jumping off phase because long before the pandemic, I had heard this and I was like, I have to use that somewhere in the story in a, in a, in a story. And so I thought it was perfect for Phillips, who's really Seymour Hunter. Um, and, you know, the last part of his name was important because that's what he becomes, a hunter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how about Jack in this, in this book? He's um, a little older. He's 15 versus 13. How has his character evolved from the first book? Well, what I... What I really liked about Jack in this book, what I really love, because I love Jack, I think he's, you know, um, you know, he was very vulnerable in the first book, even though he had, you know, what people would say, oh, my God, you have these gifts, like you can hear people's thoughts, you can help ghosts, you know, like sort of uh, leave, you know, the ghosts that are stuck here in the real world, like that one scene in the book of souls where he's down in the subway and he's hearing all of these voices and he sees this woman who is actually a ghost mm -hmm. and she over and over again, she keeps jumping in front of the same train and he's the one that tells her you're dead. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like stop doing this. So, but he's still finding himself where in the second book, he, I think he understands his, I don't want, and, I don't want to call them gifts because he doesn't call them gifts. He calls them abilities. And I think he understands how he can use them for good. And I think he's also troubled so much because he feels like he keeps losing people, right? Like they're telling him that Catherine and his family don't exist. So he's like, Oh my God, that's, that's, is that a dream? Was that just, and he, and he's like, I, I've never been happier in my life than I was as a father and a husband. So, if that doesn't exist, then how could I ever get that back? And and then with the mystics, you know, the ghost of Casper Green Street kind of undoes that group. And Mr. David, who was his mentor and was helping him explore. And then he sees these people who he thinks are more powerful to, than him. And they're they're not. They're they're completely upset. And you know, I think there's a line where he says, um, you know. People love to play with the paranormal and people are fascinated with ghosts, but to actually see one right there in all its power 
that's not, you know, like that they may like the idea of the creepiness and the shadows and the, you know, is that in the window and who moved that thing, but to actually see a ghost that's as powerful as Casper Green Street, they were not prepared for that. So I think he understands that with his abilities, he's got to be very careful with them because, you know, there's also the loss. They, he watches Peter Cairo have a nervous breakdown because the ghost is haunting his apartment. Um, and, and he realizes the fragility, I guess, of it all, you know? And so I think that is like his arc is like, how do I balance this? How do I balance this ability without thinking I'm helping somebody and maybe I am helping somebody, but in the meantime, there are casualties. Does that make sense? Yes, and his his character is also interesting because in his head, whether it's real or it wasn't real, he was a 47-year-old husband and father of three, and he, in a lot of ways he is often the adult in situations throughout the book, even though now he's 13 or 15 or with, you know wherever you are in the story. So that's that's an interesting duality for him as well. Right, and I think it also takes on, like, you know, the time, like, yeah, you know, like, I, I don't know about you, but I'm like, I'm a fan of time travel, you know? And um, mm -hmm. so it's like, was that an existence? Was that something that, you know, like there's a, there's a folklore like um, with the Irish that they say that when you're, you're on your way to being born, when you're coming through the canal, that you, you, you have a, a moment of like being able to see your entire life until you get out. And then the, once you hit the bright lights or, you know, what you're at the outside, that all disappears. So is it that, or is it time travel? Like that's, I kind of want, and that's why I love to do the podcast as uh, podcasts. And I also love to do the book clubs because people go, well, I think I was thinking this, you know, and in one of them in the book of souls, the they, one woman asked me if uh, Jack was a ghost. She goes, is he a ghost? Is that what we're going to find out in the second book? And I was like, you'll have to read the second book. Of, well, of course you did. <laughs> um, uh, yes. But yeah, I can imagine people would have a lot of different theories on what, on what, what's going on with Jack and what's going on overall in the story. Um, do you want to talk a little bit more about the book clubs and um, it, I mean, how, Obviously, people have been doing a lot of Zoom meetings in um, the times of the pandemic. So I've talked to a lot more authors who have done more book clubs. But how does that work for you in terms of finding book clubs that want you to speak with them? Well, yeah, and I think that's that's the um, probably the hardest part because it's it's not something like you're advertising. Like it's on my website. I put it up on Facebook. But it's interesting, like who will contact you? Like I had these group this uh small uh book club from pittsburgh um and they contacted me on facebook and they were just like um oh do you will you do out book club and i was like yeah because i mean i i really enjoy it um and so and then you know i went to school in the the book this the book uh the school is named epiphany which is the book, the school I actually went to when I lived in New York City when I was a kid in the 70s. And um, so one of the, the girls in my class from then had read my Christmas stories book. And then she read this story and her and I would go back and forth. So I did her book club. She was like, I go, you know, I do book clubs. And she was like, oh, my God, we'd love to have you. So it was so fun because I hadn't seen her in a lot of years. And I'm on Zoom with all of these people from New York. Um and of course, they were having wine, but it was a little too early for me because I think I their book club started at 7.30 and I'm 4.30 out here. But that was so much fun because just to, you know, to be able to see her was a ball and, you know, and then her whole club. And what a lot of people have is like, I think a little bit of miscon uh, misconceptions. Like they say, this is not a book that I would normally read. But then when once I read it, I was like, yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed it. And I was like, because I think when they put the, the logo on it, horror, you're going to, you're going to think one thing and one thing only. And, and I don't think it's, 
I think there's some scary moments, just mm-hmm. like there are scary moments in life. But I, you know, I don't think the Book of Souls is, I would have put that in a horror. I would put it in paranormal, but yeah. I definitely wouldn't have put it in horror. Um, and the Book of Demons, I mean, the title sort of lends itself to say horror, but I also think that there's a lot going on there too, because he is a shapeshifter. And if you think about it, like Superman and Batman are shapeshifters, right? I mean, and you, th- when, if you think about it, an angel, somebody, if, if you believe in angels, if somebody passes away and they become angels, then an ain- that's a shapeshifting. So there's a lot of different ways you could do it. And I think maybe urban fantasy, I, I like better. But look, I'm a big fan of horror, wow. so I, I have no problem with it. But I just think more people would read it if they uh they wouldn't let the label scare them off of like oh no that's a book about horror it's scary but it's right you know what i mean i'm a great litmus test because i've read both of them and um yes they're 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 creepy but they are not they're not gory they're not like terrifying in in the sense that you sometimes think of horror right so like there's no possession going on in the book of demons Right. It's just the really a battle of good and evil. And, you know, if we think of good as being, you know, on the side of the angels and bad as being on the side of the demons, then that's that's really what you're looking at. It's just, you know, I'm going to put a pin in this conversation so we can pick it up when we come back. Uh, It's time for our second break of the podcast. Stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review podcast and I'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I am speaking with Kevin Moore about his book, The Book of Demons. Before this, we were talking about horror and the nature of horror and does this book fit in with horror and yes, it does and no, it doesn't. And we are going to pick up that conversation with um, a little bit more discussion about Casper Greenstreet. Why Casper Greenstreet was such an interesting character because you get to know him so much more in the first book and so you see everything that led up to the person he became and the choices he made and you know is he good is he evil is he like everyone a combination thereof and then the way that morphs into how he is in the afterlife right or as it goes excuse me right right exactly exactly and like i think that you know i think a lot of people in our society feel invisible at times and um when and Casper did a good portion of his life feel invisible. But once he became a ghost, he was like, oh, but invisibility is power. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. where he, he didn't feel that way when he was, you know, a flesh and blood. But in the, the in-between world, when he was a ghost, being invisible gave him the ability to chase people out of those apartments and scare the daylights out of people in the building and, you know, and Jack was the only one that he really didn't scare that way. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of other characters and character development, um, do you do you like to let your characters evolve kind of naturally throughout the story, or do you have a pretty firm handle on who they are and how they're going to act before you start writing? Um, I, I would say there's probably a little of both. Like Jack, I I kind of understood 
from from the get go. But like Casper, like he was not going to be he was not he was going to be the ghost always, but he was not going to be have the arc that he did have and and as big a role as he did. He was going to be a ghost that Jack uh, saw and was trying to how he felt was help move on. Um, But then he just took off and I just fell in love with writing him. And I was like, okay, I've got to give him the, the pre story as well as not just the ghost. How did he become a ghost? What did he feel? What did he think? You know, he felt that he was a mediocre painter. He was like, he even considered himself a hack. And then in his head, once he started using his blood, and he did the duality series where he painted uh, the soul of a person and how they appeared in real life. And it became his, you know, it became magic and people wanted him and they wanted a Casper Green Street original and they were willing to spell hun- spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to get it. Um, so, yeah, that old kind of he took he took off by himself with that. And then Phillips, I knew. In the second book, Mr. Phillips um, or Seymour Hunter, uh, I knew he was the bad guy and that I could have a lot of fun with him. So I knew that he had to be the person that seemed to be way more powerful than Jack, which he was. Um, and how does Jack handle him? How does Jack prevent him from because if you look at it at the you know one of the problems with jack is like the mystics break up peter moves you know what i mean like he's alienated himself from from some of the kids in his school um so with with the battling comes loss and i i wanted to make sure that was there um so did i did i answer that question uh, yes, I think so. I mean, it just the, the way things evolve and how things changed as you wrote, how, you know, you want to highlight certain character aspects as yeah. they develop throughout the story. Right. Yeah. And I wanted to make Jack, you know, you know, have a lot of flaws, you know, mm-hmm. like he talks about lying where you can understand as a reader why he lies, because you can't just walk in and say, hey, dad, so, you know, there's a ghost across the street and I'm having some trouble with this. And, you know, the day we were down in the um, subway, I was also hearing people's thoughts and, you know, like people start to think of you as like, is this what, what's going on here? Is this mental illness, you know? But so I, I wanted to make sure he had flaws and he was aware of the flaws he had. Because I think those characters, are mo- they're much more interesting to me. Yeah. I don't know if you ever watch a movie or you, when you're reading a book and you see a character and they're just too perfect. Mm-hmm. You're like, for me, I'm like, well, it's a little boring. Yeah. Yeah. There, there, there isn't a lot of growth when they just start out perfect and stay perfect. Yeah. Exactly. Um, in terms of now, I, and we, you asked me if I read the end of the book, I have questions, but I don't, I also don't want to give away a lot about the end of the book because obviously we want people to read it. Um, but so it wrapped up a lot of things. It uh, left a, a, some other things open-ended. Will there be more in this series? Y- yes. Okay. I'm like, I'm sort of working on a third book right now. Cause I think Jack Kelly, there's, there's so many places to go with this. Um, there's the whole family thing. There's, you know, what happens to him in high school. Uh, there's his the relationship with the cop, you know, where the cop says to him, you know, you've got to be careful because some of this stuff, you, like he's, you know, a seasoned detective and he's like, some of these people, these, these people are dancing with the devil. And so I think there could be a relationship there with the cop and some of these things. And then there's also the left, there's still more paintings. And this is one of the things that came out of the book club. One of the, a couple of the people were asking me, so in the next book, are we going to have, find out what went on with the paintings for Pandora's box? So there's, there's a lot to do with Jack Kelly. Um, so I'm, I'm making a lot of notes. Um, I'm actually have had, he's come to me in some lucid dreams that were really interesting mm-hmm. and I fun and take it in a very different way. Um, 
you know, like um, bring some witchcraft um, into it. Um, and, uh, you know, even playing some more with the time travel. Uh, so, yeah, there's there's going to be more. Okay. Like right now I'm writing, um, I'm working on a, a completely, completely different book, a completely okay. different genre. <laughs> Okay, let, let, let's let's put a pin in that. I just have one quick question, uh, or I guess in terms of characters that might make an appearance, um, there's a young boy with autism. I'm curious if he's going to show back up and also if we're going to learn more about Sister Elizabeth. Yes, well, Sister Elizabeth, I think I think gets sort of wrapped up in the book. The uh, I think she does, her her story gets kind of finished in the book but the interesting thing about sister elizabeth and i don't know if i brought this up to you the last time one of the the editors that i was working on with book of souls because she had a, a a much wider story like it came you know, her story went to when she was you know a child and how her life how she ended up becoming a nun so there's all of that that i took out of the book of souls that might come in so i'm like right now i'm doing like a lot of um story story cards and a lot of notes because there's there's a variety of ways to take jack but there's one story that i'm i think is coming in a little louder for me because it, like i said it did come up in a few dreams which i always find i love when a character that i'm working on shows up in a dream and I'm like, okay, this could be really interesting to take it this way. And it's the high school Jack, but um, sister Elizabeth, I don't think would be in that book. I think she might be something maybe even that stands on her own because I did love that character, even though she was, uh, she became Jack's nemesis because in the beginning she, she, him and her had some kind of, psychic moments you know what i mean like he was one of the first things to be aware of was something that was going on with her and i like i've already written her whole backstory so i i know a lot about her and how she became sister elizabeth and i think that's also an interesting story line right. that i'd like to explore mm -hmm. yeah i mean yeah she's kind of wrapped up but then there's also like i, I could see how a little bit more about her backstory would be would be interesting yeah and i and i did have that and they were like and I, you know it's the funny thing as a writer which like i like having um a really good editor is when um uh like the editor was like so i like sister elizabeth but you need to cut all her backstory <laughs> which i didn't do but because i left you know tidbits uh, you know right. a trail but it was much more in depth. And, yeah. and so I really do have a very big, um, I don't know, it might sound weird, but I love for her. Like, I really like, like that character, even though she doesn't always come across as the most compassionate, um, nurturing uh, character towards Jack. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you mentioned. And it's also you... about miracles, too, because, you know, you know, I think she was always hoping for a miracle for herself. She felt like she needed it and maybe she didn't, but there was like that little bit of jealousy that Jack, when he kept back to school, he was considered the miracle kid because he recuperated, you know, he had the near death experience and then they said he would never walk. And, and then all of these things come back. And when you looked at him, you didn't know anything had happened except she was picking up, on some of his abilities, but she didn't, she thought that it might be that he brought something back with her, with him. Right. right. Yeah. And when she does get a little bit of a miracle and again, don't want to give too much away when she, but toward the end of her story, when she gets a little bit of a, what could be considered a miracle, she kind of falls apart a little bit because of it. Yeah. 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 No, um, I agree with you because she, like, I think that's like when we, you know, we sort of cleanse ourselves and when we really face our own shadows and here she was like what how she saw him was maybe not correct right would you yeah. say yeah. yeah yeah so um you mentioned working on something completely different can you talk a little bit about that so it was a story i wrote a while ago it was 
I had written it as a screenplay and I'm turning it into um, trying to turn it into a, a novel. And it's basically um, about people, um, mainly three women. And one of them is a detective. One of them is an actress and one of them is homeless. And it's their, their story of how they become fully awake in their lives. Okay. Um, yeah, and it's always hard to, rock, to talk about a work in progress. So I will not, I will not push you with too many questions on that. Um, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Cause I'm like, <laughs> yeah, like I'm still playing it on. And these are, you know, for me, for me, I have to love the character, you know, and I do love these characters and mm -hmm. they've been around a while because originally there was, it was only a story about one woman who was a detective and she was working on a murder case. And then I was like, okay, well, what if I, you know, I like to bring spirituality into everything I'm doing. Um, so there'll, there'll be some of that, but there, it's not going to, I would not say it's paranormal at all. Okay. Um, what have you been reading when you're reading for yourself rather than for research? Okay. So, um, I did, I went back and read a couple of like, uh, I, I read Rosemary's baby. Um, I read, um, I just read the the Goldfinch, which I loved. Um, I'm in the midst of what am I in the midst of? A book I just started. A, it's a kind of a it's a site. Uh, it's a doctorate. A doctor wrote this book. It's called It Will Never Happen to Me, and it's basically you know a true story about you know people who grow up in dysfunctional families, and there's the one child who is you know maybe doesn't end up you know, with alcohol or drug issues or some of the drama that happens in the family, but there's other things that, um, so it's more of like, I don't want to say it's a self-help book, but it's more about that. Like the things that we, the shadows, our own personal shadows, like how shadow work. And I've been reading some stuff on young, um, Jungian, um, theories on shadows. And so I'm, I'm kind of interested in a lot of that stuff. Um, and I'm, <laughs> what else did I read? I, cause I, I have been, well, and I've been actually listening to more, more books than, um, than, than I'm actually reading. I've been doing a lot of the audio, um, where the crawdads sing. I'm in the midst of that. I started reading, um, because my wife's book club was reading it and it, so she had it on audio and I started to listen to um, the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo, Evelyn Hugo, mm -hmm. which I stopped. I hate to like, I just, it just wasn't resonating with me at all. Yeah. It's so, so popular on TikTok right now, but I haven't read it. Yeah, no, I, I mean, you know, I'm, it's people love it. So it's, but for me, I just was like, okay, maybe the next chapter. Okay, maybe the next chapter. And then I just was like, yeah, I think I'm going to be done here. Um, so yeah, those are those are what I'm, I've been reading the last little bit. And I've been, uh, I'm actually right now in the midst of the audio version of um, the Book of Demons because I've got to approve it. Mm -hmm. So I've been listening to that and, you know, making notes and everything. And I, I think Luke is doing a great job on that one. Time for our third and final break of the podcast, but I will say that I did listen to the audiobook of Book of Souls, and the narrator does a great job, so um, very much enjoyed his reading of the Book of Souls. Now let's go ahead and take our final break of the podcast. Stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Pets bring such joy to our lives, and the GSMC Pets Podcast is here to share in that joy. We'll tell stories of pets finding their forever homes, acting in unexpected ways, being helpful, or just being silly. Whether you love dogs, cats, llamas, reptiles, fish, or you've never met an animal you didn't like, the GSMC Pets Podcast is for you.
Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I'm speaking today with author Kevin Moore. Before the break, he had just mentioned the audiobook for Book of Souls, or that the audiobook for Book of Demons was being recorded. And so we are picking up with that conversation with my next comment slash question. Is it the same narrator as the first book? Yeah. Yeah. It's the same guy. You know what? Okay, this is off topic, but... I was going to ask you about the audiobook anyway. Uh, and then I was listening to the audiobook in preparation uh, before I, I read Book of Demons, just to remind myself about Book of Souls. And um, and I had just seen something about how Canadians pronounce the word decal. We say decal, they say decal. And I had to rewind because Luke says decal. There is a. Oh, wow. Well. And I didn't catch that in the first book. Yep, yep. On the storage unit where the painting is stored, it says um, the the apartment number, and there's a decal. He says, <laughs> and I had oh, to rewind to make sure I heard it right. That's funny because you know I had to um, while I was listening to I would go on to Google and get the pronunciation of things and, and uh-huh. send it to him because it was like there's a where it's King Herod and he said King Herod. Yeah. Um, and what was the other word? It was um, oh, Stuyvesant Town. Yes. And he was he was like sounding it out, like you could tell that it was like you know. Uh, yes. Yeah, and I was so, but I mean, it's it's amazing that you could just pull something off on, or I could have said it myself, copied it in a voice and put it in. Yeah, but those are the things I. But he's pretty, you know, he's very good. Like I don't I think sometimes uh, Canadians and um, and and the Australians and the English are better understanding like an American sound than we, when I try to do like a Canadian sound or a British sound, it's like, or it, I, I kind of feel like those actors are better at it. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Sometimes I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I was going to ask you the um, there's original music in the first audio book in the book of souls. Um, how did that come about? Well, I, I, he's a friend of mine. Um, Josh Lim and he's like a young he's as young as my son is and uh he's just a really great musician and so we were in this group together and he was not a musical group just a group and um it was a men's group and uh he played some music for us one time and I was like oh my god and the music the name of that music is called home which is where Jack is trying to get and I just was like I I want that and so him and I made a deal and, and that's where the music came from. And, uh, he's, yeah, he's a really talented young guy and his music is fantastic. You wouldn't know that it wasn't written for the story because it captures that mood perfectly. Right. Right. That's yeah. yeah that's what, you know, it was like, um, that's what him and I said. It was like, I go this, he goes, oh, well, I'll write you something original. And I was like, no, no, I want that. And and it, the fact that it was named home, I was like, I, mm-hmm. I felt like it was serendipity. I was like, no, this is perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, oh, wait, uh, you know what? Let me backtrack a little bit. Did we talk about the fact that Book of Demons is not yet out? It'll come out in October. Yeah, it comes out on October 11th. So okay. it's just a couple of weeks away. Yes. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to it. I think I was like, I might've been more excited. Like I'm kind of excited about this book and the fact that so far, you know, obviously we're, you know, trying to get some press on it and we're sending it to people who review it. And, um, and everybody who's read it so far seems to really like it. And it's, it was what I was hoping for because there was so much going on in the book of souls in a lot of ways, you know, you had the paintings that, you know, I did a lot of research on. And so I had to, that had, that storyline had to come to life and, it, and I had to explain how Jack became Jack and, you know, and then the ghost and who was Casper Greenstreet. Where in this book, like I think somebody just, one of the reviews I read on it, I really enjoyed was they said, it's, it's just nonstop mayhem from the beginning to the end. And I was like, yeah, I like that. It's like a roller coaster. Um, and it's just, I think it's simpler in some ways. Yeah, and it, it, it's very fast moving. It is a shorter book in terms of page length, so it, it's a fast read. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely is. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because 
didn't you get the book that had no page numbers? Oh, yes, I did. I forgot about that for Book of Souls, which was the Book of Souls. I remember like they were because they were trying to get it out to people, you know, um, and to, you know, Golden State Media Concepts and your book review and your podcast. And so they sent a couple of them out like that or a few of them out like that. And I was like, no, <laughs> you and I, I talked about that. Because... You were like, did you deliberately leave numbers off those pages? And I was right? like, no, yeah, I, I thought maybe it was part of the the, the, the story somehow. Yeah, no, that was uh, like the disappearing, you know, <laughs> the ghostly <laughs> numbers. They just disappeared. No, no, that's, there's numbers on all those books. Yeah, but yeah, at least but they were I remember in... having that conversation with you because I was like, Where, where's the page numbers? <laughs> but they were all in the right order. So even though there weren't yeah. page numbers, they were at least in the right order. I've had books that have come that have had either missing the last few chapters or they were in the wrong order. So there's all kinds of craziness that can happen. Yeah. And I think it was just a... The, and they were like, no, 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 this is towards the for the press, and they're they're used to getting stuff like this sometimes. And I was like, no, no, please, please make sure there's page numbers. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, um, well, how about uh, let's talk about internet presence. So you've got a website. You are also on social media. If you can share all those places where people can find you. Okay, so um, my web page is kevinmorepublishing.com. Uh, dot com. I'm on Facebook. I'm under. You can find me at Kevin Moore, but you can also find me as KevinMoorePublishing.com. That's on Facebook and Instagram. I do not have uh, a TikTok presence. I wish I did. Uh, and that's pretty much where you can find me on those three things. And uh, again, I, I love to do book clubs. And if you want to send me a note, I'm also somebody who would respond to an individual reader that does not belong to a book club that maybe uh has a question about the book either book okay thank you um kevin is there anything that we haven't covered that you want to mention at this point um no i think that you know the only thing i like i you know don't let the uh the genre where they put it like and I, I kind of maybe feel like you and I might have touched on this, um, Margaret Atwood. Like I, I've listened to her, uh, and she did master class, and so I, I, I've listened to her, and I really like, you know, obviously love her stuff. But um, she had said, as a writer, you're, it's not your responsibility to worry about where they put the book, what genre they say the book is. Um, but I would just like to say. Don't let wherever you are seeing either the Book of Souls or the Book of Demons and they're calling it horror, uh, check it out because it's it's not your it's not your grandma and your grandpa's uh, horror. I think it's a different style. I think it's more urban fantasy, mm -hmm. um, you know, where the imagination rules. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I, I, I still don't understand why they can't put books in more than one genre. I mean, you'd think we'd evolve, have evolved to that point, but we, we can't quite seem to get there. So. Yeah. You know, I mean, my, the book of souls was in um, Barnes and Noble out here in, um, uh, in, in LA uh, down at the Grove. And so I just, you know, I went in there, I wanted to see where it was and they put it in horror. And I was like, it's, it's actually a paranormal book, <laughs> but you know, people will do what they're going to do. But I just would just say to anybody who's potentially looking to read, uh, if you'd like, you know, uh, mind uh, bending stories, take a chance on both these books. I think you'll enjoy them. Yeah. Even psychological would be a better word, I think, than horror. Yeah. Right. Don't you think it's like a psychological like I had a somebody, a friend of mine who read it and he goes, oh, I love those mind bending books. And I was like, that's a psychological thriller then. That's not necessarily, it's not the boogeyman under the bed. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it, although there is somebody under the bed in one of them, but he's not the boogeyman. <laughs> no, no. And he's hiding from the world, right? Exactly. That's Catherine. Yeah. Yeah. That's his fears, right? So, like, I thought that was, you know, he started to, like, he was so he was so afraid of things and Mr. Phillips, and he was so afraid of life that he began sleeping better under the bed because he couldn't sleep in the bed yep. uh, and actually sleep. Yeah. I mean, there's all kinds of, there's all kinds of symbol, uh, 
symbolism and, and other things throughout the book. So just, I wouldn't call them Easter eggs, but I, I don't know, psychological Easter eggs, something like that. Yeah, yeah, I, I like that. Yeah, right. There's diff- different things to discover. And and that's why for me, it's been such a thrill to do book clubs, because when somebody says, you know, they'll ask me a question and, you know, it's like you're saying, they'll have found something that somebody else does. Like some people love the paintings. Like that's that's the main part of the Book of Souls that they love. They're like, so tell me about Desiree Diamond and that painting. And, you know, and they're more, they're they're focused on the artwork and they were like, I would really love to see this artwork. And I was like, even though I created it in my head and on the page, I would love to see it too, because it's, I love art and it, yeah. And that was part of the most fun for me was to do research on all of those famous paintings. Yeah. Um, Oh, that would be fascinating if um, you got different interpretations of what you've written and how people painted it. Yeah. 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 But, no, I would love that. I would love that. Maybe, you know, maybe if I, uh, when I get some time, like I would love to take it to the high school and like give like some kind of, on a, in a, you know, have, you know, these up, up and coming artists paint something and then have a prize and be able to do that. Maybe uh, if my books sell a little bit more, I'll be able to put a, put a prize together and have, have some of those or like everybody do the one painting or the two paintings and then give awards out with money or scholarship or something like that it would be fun yeah, that'd be very cool yeah well kevin thank you so much um, i really appreciate you coming back to talk to me about both book of demons and the book of souls um thank you so much thank you sarah it's always a pleasure i really enjoyed speaking with you the last time and and it's fun and i'm just i'm just sitting here going wow she's in portugal <laughs> I, I've been here six months and I still have that thought on a daily basis. Wow, I'm in Portugal. I'm in Portugal. Good for you, man. I love people who love adventure. Once again, thank you so much to Kevin for joining me to talk about the Book of Demons and the Book of Souls as well. If you are interested in listening to that first interview, again, it is episode 332. And we talk about the Book of Souls in that one. Of course, we talk about it a little bit here, too. But if you want to go back to that previous episode, you definitely should. If you are looking for something to read this uh, this fall, it does come out in October, October 22nd. So if you um, want something right around Halloween, um, you could actually you could start with Book of Souls now and finish and then read Book of Demons in time for Halloween or You know, anytime, of course, if you're a fan of the horror genre, but specifically horror in terms of psychological, supernatural, paranormal, creepy, um, kind of mind bending, um, interesting character in that Jack is a 13 year old kind of a 47 year old all rolled into one um well 13 50, he's 15 in the second book but you know what i mean but he's also 47 <laughs> and all rolled into this one very interesting character and you should definitely check out the book of souls and the book of demons so thank you to kevin for joining me thank you as always to you my listeners i greatly appreciate you and your support of this podcast if you would like to support this podcast I- even further than just listening to it and you have not ar- done so already, I would greatly appreciate it if you would like, follow, subscribe on whatever platform you listen on and then you'll get the episodes as soon as they come out. You can also leave a review of the podcast that can be written or starred either way. It really helps us to get um, this podcast out to more book lovers such as yourselves and also we are on tiktok or excuse me yes tiktok but social media in general uh would love it if you'd follow on social media facebook twitter instagram and tiktok again love hearing from listeners if you want to ask questions or tell me what you're reading or comment on any of the interviews if you've read any of the books i would love to hear your thoughts on some of them and yeah just find me on social media i love hearing from you I also hope you will join me for the next episode. I'll be interviewing author Zachary Hagen about his fantasy series, Eternity's Well and Eternity's Mirror. It is urban fantasy, and I'm looking forward to talking to him about that series. So please do join me for that. Hope you're having a great week so far. It It is Tuesday. I am confused about the day. I know it's Tuesday. Yesterday was Monday. It was Monday all day. Today, Tuesday all day, and yet I keep thinking, like earlier I thought today was Monday, and then later I thought today was Wednesday, so I apparently am just skipping Tuesday altogether this week, but um, 
it is Tuesday. So I hope your Tuesday is going well, and I hope your week is going well. And regardless of if it's Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, (laughs) I hope that your day involves plenty of time for you to get yourself lost in a good book. Thanks, and enjoy the rest of your week. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.